South Africa's Trade Minister Ibrahim Patel on Saturday tested positive for COVID-19. The cabinet said the fourth minister to contract the virus in Africa's hardest hit country. Cabinet spokeswoman Fuma Williams said in a statement that Patel, 58, received his results on Saturday. Minister Patel is in good spirits and is in self-quarantine and will continue to work from home, Williams said. Those that have been in contact with the minister are also in self-isolation and have been encouraged to get tested, she added. Four ministers and several MPs have so far contracted coronavirus in South Africa, which has the highest number of diagnosed infections in Africa and ranks fifth in the world after the United States, Brazil, India and Russia. I would like to um, welcome um, our guests, a quick uh, conversation with uh, Neil Liu. Uh, thank you very much for joining us all the way from South Africa. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I hope I pronounced the name right, by the way. South Africa, currently, right. South Africa currently tops the list of COVID-19 cases in Africa with over 400 cases to date. What, what you know, are you doing wrong? And what you know, also may you be doing right in South Africa? It is true that South Africa has quickly climbed the ranks to be one of the highest in terms of the active cases on the ground. But what I think we can give government credit for is that what we are doing right is rolling out our testing. Um, from the onset to when government announced their hard lockdown, uh, the Department of Health went on a countrywide tour and they began with the screening while they tried to procure uh, testing machines to ensure that we can get to as many people uh, as we can. In terms of what it is that we are doing wrong as a country, I think uh, our um, citizens' ability to comply with uh, lockdown regulations has become quite a, a big issue. Um, one of the, uh, you no, one of the, 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 the epicenters um, uh, is because of our funeral culture with people refusing to drop down to numbers of about 50 people per funeral. We're still seeing a mass gatherings with people hosting birthday parties, you know, meeting up with families and not complying with the regulations themselves. And that is where we see a lot of um, the um, contamination, local contamination happening. Wow. We're also aware that despite the rise in cases, there's also been an ease of the original lockdown restrictions. Ought this decision be reversed? Wouldn't you expect that they might want to, you know, have a, you know, reverse, you know, of that um, decision? The, re the reality is that South Africa has got quite a fragile economy. So reversing the decision will really not do much, um, considering that unemployment is at just above 30 percent. And we were facing the possibility of about four million jobs being lost. And with government's inability to supplement all sectors of the economy, I don't think that, uh, you know, we would get much more from re reversing the decision and reinforcing the hard lockdown. Um, and, and so I, I, I hope I can come back to that. But let, let's also talk about public enlightenment as it stands and, of course, compliance also. Mm -hmm. How successful, you know, is this, you know, seeing that the numbers, you know, are a little frightening? Um, what is the public morale like as it, as it stands? I think that morale is low with people trying to find escapism. Uh, as I said in my intro, uh, people still holding mass gatherings, people not complying when they do meet with their family members. You know, the simple rule of have your mask on, keep sanitizing. Those are some of the simple measures that are not being followed by people on the ground. And um, we also have people who are continuously trying to get their hands on uh, black market um, contraband, such as cigarettes and alcohol, which has been banned as part of the regulations. So I think in terms of compliance, as a country, we're not doing very well. Okay, and, and um, lastly, are there signs of, you know, a silver lining amidst the ongoing battle with the pandemic? Well, as you know, we are in the thick of the storm, in the eye of the storm, um, South Africa is approaching its peak periods, which is meant to uh, go all the way throughout August and into September. So I don't think that, uh, you know, it is time to be speaking of the silver lining, especially considering um, some of the activities on the ground. Government did send out an alert um, just urging citizens to stay at home uh, and only leave if they need to, but that is not necessarily happening. And with a bit more of the economy opening up, such as restaurants, etc., we still have those large gatherings. So a lot of the silver lining will depend on our own behavior, but I think that is still quite a long time away. Um, we also heard just this week from the command council that South Africa can only really expect to go back to normalcy around 2022. So I think we're a bit a long way away from uh, the silver lining. 
All right, and the final question, and if you can do this in as uh, short, as little time as possible. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure you mentioned one of the reasons why the company, uh, the country was reopening was because of the economy. Um, you know, it had economic challenges that, you know, of course, that uh, made it necessary for the com uh, country to reopen. Um, mm -hmm. why, what do you think could have been done instead um, to leave the lockdown and, you know, still have the, the economy running? I think that there was no way to have the economy fully running without compromising the health. You needed the government needed to one follow the science and two decide whether or not they prioritize the economy um, versus uh, human life. And ultimately, there is no economy without human life. So the hard lockdown for me was actually done in the nick of time. Okay. Thank you so much um, for the conversation, Neil Liu, and um, we would love to, you know, have um, an maybe extended conversation again sometime in the future. Stay safe. Thank you for having me.